So Keith, we're coming up to the anniversary when lockdown was enacted. How have you found the last year? It's really amazing to think that it, it's been over a year since the first two cases were declared in York and we had a series of, of national lockdowns. And I've just been really impressed how our volunteers, residents, key workers, healthcare workers have kept up supporting us and supported communities throughout that whole period of time. And although there, there is light at the end of the tunnel, which is great news, uh, we still have more to do. And I know that, that residents and businesses will continue to have to change the way that they do things. What's been the biggest challenge, do you think, for yourself and your cabinet in that time? Has there been anything in particular that's been really difficult to deal with? I think the real challenge for the council has been the, the amount of changes, what I would describe as dialing up and dialing down. So the government guidance changed very quickly. Sometimes we didn't get notice before it was actually announced. So whether that be uh, waste services as an example, or customer services or payment of business grants and benefits, one day we're having to dial up a service to make sure residents get support. The next day we're having to change how it's delivered, add social distancing measures or change how our staff are, are working. And no doubt that has been a really big challenge that, that I know council officers have, have risen to. And obviously uh, there's been a lot of learning alongside this from leaders across the country. It's a, it's a very new thing, the issue of lockdown. Looking back in hindsight, is there anything you would have done differently? I think for me, the most important thing is, is around communication. On, on lots of different levels. So, so making sure we're communicating as much as possible uh, to residents and businesses, uh, making sure they've got the, the latest public health advice, but also know where to go to get support, whether that's a, a business grant, whether it's to help to, to get onto universal credit or knowing what they can do and, and can't do with all of the changing rules. Um, and equally, that communication also works to the government. We've been quite frustrated along the way with Public Health England and the Department of Health. And I hope that they've learned about the amount that local government can do if they work with us rather than against us. And if I may, just coming back to when the decision was announced about lockdown, what was going through your head? It's obviously a whole range of emotions and dealing with something as new as this. What was going through your mind? I think it's like with everybody, <laughs> having to deal with really big changes in a really quick period of time. One day I was in West offices talking to, to officers about the first cases in the UK. Uh, we didn't know, know very much about what was then to become a, a pandemic. Uh, but then within days, thousands of staff and councillors were not in the building. We were setting up from home. I've set a little office up in, a, in the spare room over that period of time. And as I say, even from that point, we've seen so many changes. Um, and really, for my job has been to make sure that I shout loud and clear for what York residents, businesses um, and services need and, and make sure that both that's delivered at the council level, but also heard at a regional and government level. So just coming to some of the questions we've had from the public, um, putting to you, Keith. Uh, first one's asking, could council tax go up again in the next few years to plug the gap left by COVID? I think we've got a real double whammy at the moment in terms of the council budget. And um, there's been a lot of new cost pressures uh, with COVID demand for new services, particularly around adult social care and children's social care. But we've also had a lot of lost income, for example, for no parking income. Um, for a long period of time during lockdown. And of course, that's on top of reductions to local government funding from, from uh, national governments for the last decade. Um, and so my message has been loud and clear to the government, don't pass the buck on to, to local council taxpayers, give local government and also adult social care a sustainable long-term settlement um, so that that can be done more fairly into the future. But there is certainly a risk that the government isn't listening as, as clearly as we would like them to be. And the next one here is what's being done to protect local services from being cut following the pandemic? So we passed our council budget uh, very recently for the year ahead um, and it was one of the toughest budgets we've had to pass in a long time and um, that saw nearly eight million pounds of reductions what we did do is make sure that the vast majority of those are what I would call back office costs. So saving from staff, saving from how we do things differently in our buildings. Um, 
but that has therefore enabled us to invest particularly in adult social care and children's social care that actually gained money um, through the budget, but also maintain funding on those services that residents really expect to see. So, for example, street environment services, waste collection, and also in a city like York to make sure that, for example, we can support the cultural heritage and business sectors uh, for when that recovery comes. And next one along, have unpaid carers in York been left behind by COVID and the pandemic? I think unpaid carers and carers have done a huge amount during the pandemic and, and really are some of the unsung heroes for the amount of work that they do supporting uh, individuals, families and, and communities. And my party, the Liberal Democrats, have launched a big national uh, campaign to say um, that carers allowance should go up by a thousand pounds. And that's not enough, but at least it's a start. Um, I'm really proud in York that we have what's called the York Carers Centre, and that makes sure that carers get support, get advice. And then obviously what we need to make sure we can do is keep investing in carers support locally, do everything we can whilst lobby lobbying nationally for that extra support. And will the city be safe when we reopen in the coming weeks? And then the last question after that is sort of a follow on, which is, are you worried about an influx of visitors and tourists driving up the infection rate when things do reopen? I know that an awful lot of work has started now um, to reopen um, York and the city centre and to look at what that's going to look like when the government roadmap gets to the right point. Um, and for me, it's actually reflecting on the success that we had in last summer in York. So, for example, there was a lot of new outdoor spaces and a lot of pop up spaces, for example, by College Green near York Minster and businesses and our business improvement district did a huge amount of work uh, to make sure that people were safe, that information and signs were there, that hand sanitizer was not just uh, in the city centre, but also in our secondary shopping areas, for example, in Acom and Haxby. Um, and I know that amount of effort and more is going to go into making sure that we support businesses and make our city centre as safe as possible um, for that reopening. So there are the questions from the public. Just a few follow-up questions for myself. In terms of transport projects, infrastructure projects, have you had to scale back on any of those that had been planned before the pandemic because of the impact on finances that COVID measures have had? One of the things we, we looked at when we set our budget was uh, major regeneration projects. Uh, so, for example, in York, we've got big schemes like York Central and the Guild Hall, Castle Gateway, the York Outer Ring Road, uh, the completion of the community stadium very recently. Um, and we very much took the view that if we as a city were going to build back better, if we were going to support businesses and residents to get good jobs and to recover, when that opening of, of the economy and society came, we absolutely needed to continue with that capital investment and those regeneration projects. And for me, schemes like York Central um, that had, for example, a 155 million pound infrastructure budget are more important than ever um, to demonstrate what York can do and how we can create jobs as, as we move to that recovery phase. And on to education, we've obviously seen pupils and teachers returning back to schools. How confident are you that that will be done safely and that that can be run locally uh, in a successful way? I think the first thing I would say is just like key workers, NHS staff, GPs, teachers, teaching assistants and, and schools have been fantastic. And I think a lot of people forget that schools have been there throughout um, making sure that the children of key workers uh, and, for example, children with special educational needs um, continue to receive education and I think a lot of people were pleased to see that wider reopening of schools but as you say it has to be done safely. I know that schools in York work through something called the York Schools and Academies Board and that makes sure that they work together, they share best practice and they all make sure that they follow the latest public health advice to make sure that children and young people are safe going back to school and, and starting to get back to learn again. And just finally for me, in in your view, do you think this will be the last lockdown locally? Are you hopeful that when things reopen that we won't have to return to the sort of restrictions we've been living with for the last year or so? I certainly hope, as I'm sure everybody in York does, that this is the last 
national lockdown because uh, tiered systems and lockdowns have such significant impacts on, on residents and businesses. Um, I think that the government learned that the tiered system didn't work last time because, of course, nowhere, particularly cities like York or islands, uh, where we're surrounded, of course, by a variety of other areas, and we're lucky to have a city that a lot of people want to visit and, and look at or, or shop in. And um, so I hope that the roadmap with a gradual relaxation everywhere at the same time is the, the right course. Um, but having said that, they must make sure that they do give enough time for the various steps and in a sense, don't be rushed and that public health is the number one consideration so that we don't get another lockdown again.